Breezy. That's great. Thanks, Nicole. Do you uh, spend any time on subre or on Reddit or like any like forums like that? Do you have any forums that you frequent where you get involved? You know, I've never gone on Reddit yet. Mm. I I um I went on Facebook for about seven years, and uh, then I quit. I can did about three years ago. I just continued my uh, my account, and uh, I have a a Twitter account that I've made maybe six or seven years ago and I made two posts on it. And now all I do is observe the emails they send me every day. Oh. I, I track them. I, I track what they're feeding to me. Mm -hmm. and everything else. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't really use uh, very, very much, uh, uh, very many of the platforms. I mean, like I have to use, I do I do search things on the internet, so I, I use DuckDuckGo most of the time, but sometimes it's not very effective, so I use Google. Mm -hmm. uh, reluctantly. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That must um must have been hard for you during your campaign then to try and campaign um, without with uh, using limited um, platforms on online. Did you find that to be difficult, or did you find it hard to reach people? Uh, well, I only reached uh, like 1,344 uh, that voted for me. So, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it wasn't that successful. You know, I was the third lowest showing of all the, the 12 candidates. But, uh, yeah, it was difficult. It was a challenge. And I, um, I freaked out just about two weeks before the, before the election, I thought, because I had had a plan. My plan was that... Um, and, and, and I'd been working on my plan was to perform electric guitar really loud at busy intersections every day, except mm -hmm. when it was raining. And wearing my the sparkly jacket and my loud electric guitar, and the people by the election time would uh, recognize that that's who I was, the guy that was running for mayor. Uh, but it wasn't working. Like they called the federal election in the middle of the civic election, and it, it was eating up all the airtime. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. there, were, there was nothing discussed in any of the forums. Nobody went to them. And uh, so uh, my plan of, of being able to, like, reach out to my community by being out in front of all the drivers, because Edmonton is a driver's city, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it didn't really work. So at the last two weeks, I could see it wasn't working. And uh, I, I hired two people to um, do... Uh, uh, Facebook posts for me and oh. Twitter posts and uh, Instagram posts. And mm -hmm. I don't know even if that helped, but it was sort of fun. Like I did my research uh, and uh, they said uh, that the, the couple of guys that ran Boris Johnson's um, successful campaign to be prime minister of Britain was two young guys from Australia, like about your ages. I think they were in their late twenties. And, uh, they uh, they had a, a a YouTube video talk, talking about their techniques, and I studied that. And they said that uh, video is king. Like this, is what we're doing now, video is is king on on, on the social media. And uh, they said that they had to do like ten posts an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. is what they did. Like, and and they said it didn't matter uh, if they were really uh, professional. It just mattered that they were that you were really quick reacting to what was happening in the news. And that uh, uh, you, you know, like humor was good, sarcasm was good, things like that. So mm -hmm. I asked my people that were were doing that job for me to take that into uh, account. And then they they did do ten posts a day for ten days. But I, I I it was just sort of like a like a freak out at the end. I thought, oh my my plan did not work because of this and this. So I'm going to try this, but it, it didn't it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Um, I guess that's. I was. I've watched a couple of interviews on you uh, that you've done, and um, some of the like a lot of the. I I really agree with a lot of the <coughs> things that you were saying, and the like. You, I, it sounds like you're really committed to helping to end homelessness and um, <coughs> working on making communities more. I guess accessible and organized, and I thought those were really uh, great ideas. Um, 
And I was wondering, like, did you get a lot of like, did you get a lot of feedback from people that you talked to that were like the positive feedback about those things? Or did you find that people are um, like, were like calloused or had like, um, I don't know, uh, differing opinions? Well, uh, I had a lot of positive feedback from the people that I did contact. Like I tried to, mm -hmm. to phone 30 people a day just through my own personal contacts. And that was mm -hmm. my goal to talk to 30 people a day uh, for eight yeah. months. And that was very interesting because it's like doing a survey, you know, like I, I didn't formally write down all the responses to everything, but you, you get a general idea of how what people are thinking and how they're feeling. So, so I like that. And, uh, uh, you know, I lost. What was the, what was your question again? I got distracted there. Oh no worries. I was just wondering, um, like, what what kind of feedback you got from people about your ideas? Because I, I think that they're like wonderful ideas. Um, the things like the the increasing taxes and the um, the cash incentive for voting and stuff. I think some people might see them as like extreme or like out there. But like, did you get any positive feedback about those, or did you have any? Oh yeah, that, that, I got both. Uh, you know, I had. I had people. Uh, I had I had sort of like a wide range of of responses to to my platform, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, like it, it it was really interesting to see how like my email was so busy. It was like eight months of like twelve hour days of of answering all the email. It's like so many people send you surveys and Google forms and everything, or all these uh, lobby organizations want you to answer all their questions mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of like annoying because like a lot of the answers were right on my web page but they want me to take time out to answer their specific questionnaire instead of doing their own research but that's the way it was it was it was an education to see uh, all the organizations that were thinking it was important to ask all these questions of candidates yeah for sure yeah, I think it's, uh, um, that was kind of one of the main things I was interested in as far as um, what your process was in, in the, in the course of running for mayor. Uh, because like, I, I think, like, would you think it's fair to say like, you're, you're certainly an idealist, right? Right. And uh, I, I think that's an interesting question is um, balancing the idea, your like idealism and realism. Uh, you said you got how many, how many votes total? 1,344. So did you have an idea like going into it of how well you expected to do, how well you like ambitiously wanted to do? Like what was your kind of threshold? Were you in it to win it, in it to just get like your voice in there or what? I was in it to win it, uh, but I was quite uh, realistic to think that, that that was a really a long shot, but I was going to try for it anyway. Right. And uh, uh, But I did expect to get about 10 times more votes than I did. Uh, like, uh, at, And I think that uh, the reason that my, my uh, the, the, the account that I got was, was way below my expectations was because of the uh, the way the race went, like there was very little discussion in the community uh, except for Mike Nickel is bad, so vote Sobe. It was was pretty well the discussion, and that was the it's not a very deep discussion, which frustrated me. Like I wanted to talk about uh, all the issues, and 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 get people talking about the issues and get people engaged, but everybody was like. Uh, over COVID worried and uh, the federal election. Uh, and so it, you know, I, I was really disappointed. Like I, I thought that I could uh, somehow get through to the people that don't usually vote and get them to vote. I mean, if I could have done that, uh, they're the majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I, and I think that's uh like a recurring issue and it's it's hard to see how that's going to get better is people we've got it we've basically got a system set up where it's like you have essentially two people that are running against each other because people don't want the other guy to get in and so people are scared to give their votes to 
people that they might align with more politically because, well, what if this person that is, you know, on the other side gets in, right? Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to be fully honest, like that's how I voted because when I look at that list of candidates, I go, um, you know, I look, I look at candidates and I see a platform like yours that says, "Hey, let's stop burning everything." And I think, hmm, this is probably the most like salient point really any of us should be talking about is the fact that we're in an unfolding climate emergency, but that's not in the end what gets talked about. So the idealist in me as a voter thought, well, I mean, this is who. This is somebody I would love to vote for, um, but in all honesty, like the realist in me looked at it and went, well, how concerned am I about uh, Mike Nickel winning and, you know, do I want to vote strategically? And I, I did vote for Amarajit Sohi, and I do, I do like stand by that vote. I think he is uh, a great candidate, but it always kind of pains me. And I brought this up with uh, Harun Ali, one of our uh, prior guests who was a... Uh, I guess I would say like a long shot uh, counselor in my ward was it's a problem with first past the post voting in itself. You know, if we, if we had something like a ranked choice vote, I would immediately go out and put my idealist vote, you know, right at the top of the ballot and then move downward through my people that I think are a little more um, my realist votes. And then I can rank the people I actively dislike at the bottom. And it's, it's always dismaying that you can't do that. And I think it's it's hard to imagine um, genuine long shot candidates winning with the system we have in place. It's just so stacked against someone that comes in uh, as an outsider, if that makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. lots of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a statistic for you. Uh, Amarjeet uh, raised uh, a little over three quarters of a million dollars and he spent uh, about four dollars and seventy cents per vote. And uh, I I spent uh, almost three thousand dollars worth of my own money and I s spent a dollar seventy per vote. So I spent much less per vote than he did. Mm -hmm. That's, and uh, I don't know if that means anything, but uh, to me, it's an interesting statistic. I think it's a very interesting statistic. And I think it, I don't know, it definitely goes to show something. And I think that is, I mean, I think that's something to be proud of. Uh, as uh, one of our commenters pointed out, uh, they said, you know, 1344 might not be a lot in terms of winning, but it's still uh, a lot of people who trust you enough to vote for you. And I think that is, like all the more meaningful in a in a first past the post system where knowingly voting for any long shot candidate is in a way saying I'm voting to send a message not because I likely think this person is going to win so that's you know that's a large number of people that went like I want to make a point of voting for this person So I guess my 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 follow up question is: Having had that experience and having kind of seen some of the reality of it, um, where does your your quest, as you put it, take you next? If if that was if that didn't get you where you wanted to be, um, what do you learn from that, and what do you do next with your energy, with your activism? Well, that's totally totally clear for me right now is that um, I'm going to I'm going to be pushing uh, for uh, 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 what I call it the digital uh, public library proposal which is the idea of creating a new public service in Canada a uh, uh, digital communication service uh, where where uh, people can access all content uh, advertising free and without being surveilled a public service so we can have like a public search engine public social media uh public content access library like youtube is just a, a, a big library of videos and uh and not but not only do i want the, this service to um, give everybody uh, this free access uninterrupted free access but uh, also i wanted to automatically 
pay the uh, people who own the copyright to whatever is being produced. And it's just a job for a robot. A robot can measure when something's been streamed and and it, it, you don't have to surveil and say who's who's streaming it. Doesn't have, that doesn't have to that doesn't have to be uh, disclosed. But the other thing that, that I propose about about this kind of a, a, a way of uh, financing production of content is that the user should have like even though it's it, they trigger an automatic payment, they should have like a manual option to reverse that payment and claw it back to the library. Uh, if they, for any reason, they think the content they're accessing is inappropriate or, uh, you know, uh, you know, just unworthy, uh, uh, then they have the power just on their own content that they've triggered to be paid to pull that back. So this is like a powerful um, kind of a way dis disincentive to those who, who would want to try to uh, profit from deception. Uh, you know, like if you got clickbaited, you can reverse it. You, uh, so, and I think like it's like it's a really powerful way of a democratic way of of vetting content. Like in, in some ways, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if something is being said is wrong or bad if it isn't getting amplified and reproduced. Uh, by somebody who wants to pay for that being amplified. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you just have a, a, a lie sitting alone in the, in the library and nobody's looking at it, who cares? Yeah, and that's, I think, um, I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts about the problems with social media and things like Facebook and stuff, and they get you get more engagement from people if they're pissed off or sad or outraged. And so a lot of the algorithms reinforce those feelings so you're saying you're 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 saying that with you you're you would like to see something to counteract that basically and it sounds like you want it to be advertisement free and free to the public so where would you are you would you suggest that that's like um that it's like a government paid like a government funded service or oh for sure yeah just mm -hmm. like medicare or the highways or the courts or it's a public service but the thing is that the the government wouldn't really be in control of the flow of the funds. The mm -hmm. government would collect the funds, uh, but it would be individual people that were were triggering the payments or or banishing payments. You know. Oh, okay. And it's, so so uh, I, I I like that kind of a thing because when you put like a, a government and a bu bureaucracy in charge of saying. Oh, this piece of content's worth more than another, and this one's bad. You can't look at it. And this one's good. You should look at it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big mess, a big, a huge, long, a mess, messy thing to try to to uh, to be fair in that kind of a system. But when you allow every individual to make the choice for themselves, then it's kind of simple in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, that's an interesting idea and an con interesting concept. That's um. Something that I've been thinking about a lot is how do we counteract these like giant corporations that are have basically made it their job to profit off of um, outrage and misinformation and um, like just messing with people. Um, and that's yeah, I think that's that's a, a cool, interesting, out of the box way to think about it. Is you know maybe we just have that service for free. Like maybe that's that's something that we can. Like as a society, if we can agree that this is something that everyone needs and wants, that but we don't want to, yeah, sacrifice our privacy or our, you know, um, yeah. I think that's yeah. I think that's yeah. a very cool idea. You know what? Uh, what a lot of people don't know, and I didn't really know this till till last month, but I, I was reading about it. Is that the re the reason that that all these uh, commercial platforms can be in business? Uh, it, it, as a content access service is that in 1996 that uh, the Americans passed uh, this uh, uh, Communications Decency Act mm. and it gave it gave protection to internet platforms they called them interactive uh, digital uh, uh, computer services uh, 
they, it gave them uh, permission to reproduce uh, other people's content, but not have to be liable for it. Uh, so with with that giant loophole, it's called the safe harbor laws, uh, they can make a lot of money by by uh, like pushing harm and pushing deception. Mm-hmm. Because the guys that want the, the guys that want to want to deceive and push harm uh, uh, can can make money from it, and so they can make money from it. So it's it's a very like uh, uh, like sort of sick, like a, a patholo- What they call it, pathology is the big word. It was just a sick system, if you ask me, a system where 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 you make profits by giving people the opportunity to harm others. Like yuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, and so to me, the path to having like a new public service is to first of all, repeal those laws and say, hey, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, and, and as soon as you repeal those laws, I'm sorry, but like Google and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, all those guys would just have to shut down because they'd face so much litigation. Uh, they would just have to shut down. But the problem is, we need those services. We want that. We want to be able to access content. We want to be able to search the internet. So we're going to, if, if we repeal those laws, we have to step in to, with a new public service to provide those, like the social media, the search, and, and that library function for, like, and, and I, I think it, it should go for the whole gamut. Like we should be able to access live entertainment, live sporting events, everything through through a public service Mm -hmm. i'm not an extremist you know but i'm a zealot but you know i thought about this for a long time and it just does not make sense to have two these two very different industries married like one industry is an advertising industry and the other is a content access industry they both serve different markets the the advertising industry serves the the, uh, uh, people who want to advertise and the content access industry serves people who want to be entertained and informed. So mm-hmm. they, and they, they like they're married together, and we're 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 sort of brainwashed into accepting this based on the premise that this is saving us money, like it's cheap, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think that's true. There's no evidence to show that. There's no study that says, "Hey, oh, this really actually is saving you money to be to be uh, using advertising funded media." Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this is a, that I, I would say again, like, I mean, I'm, I'm an extremist too. So like, from a idealist perspective, I fully agree with you. It kind of leaves me with the same question that, you know, this is something that I'm always thinking of, is when I look at my ideals, like, well, how, how can I put this into um, practice in a like, practical, realistic way? So like, I guess my question is like, um, have you considered like, what your approach to this is practically like what is step one are there people you've spoken to who um have ideas about like how you how you even sell this to people uh because i i would say for one thing um one of the realities of trying to convince the public of anything is there's a real knee-jerk reaction to the idea that like something will cost them money in like a uh, a visible way you say, well, we want to use taxes to fund this, that that gets a more of a negative reaction out of people, despite, you know, the, the ways that they, they pay for everything else in some other way. Right. Like the fact that everything on YouTube is free, you're, is being paid for by the fact that you're buying something that's being advertised there. So yeah, that's my question is like, right, well, okay, well here, here's my answer is that, um, I think I think like 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 part part of what I have to do, <coughs> excuse me, is explain uh, how media economics works. Like wh- where d- where does that money come from that that Google and Facebook are making like record profits and, and where where does that money come from? And uh, like there's there is no no real in depth study, but what I'm saying just as a, an ordinary person is that. It, it doesn't quite make doesn't make quite sense if they're making all that money. Where is it coming from? And and you 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 look down the the, the money supply chain, and and what really is happening is that the, the um, advertising creates what they call false demand. 
and that means it makes people want things that they wouldn't normally be wanting without seeing the advertising mm -hmm. and like it's basic economic theory that what when demand goes up prices go up so here we live in it we live in a life where we're totally uh per persistently exposed to advertising when we're trying to get entertained or informed so so we're constantly getting wanting think things so every, maybe not you in particular but the whole society together that the demand goes up and up and up and prices go up and up and up so no matter what you go to buy whether you've seen the ad or not other people have the prices up so you you pay more for your products and services than what they're really worth and and the advertisers and and, and uh, the firms that are doing the ad advertising get to to make extra profits for, without giving you anything extra mm -hmm. a bunch of hype mm -hmm. uh, and so uh if people reckon like it's not that easy to see that that's it's it's easy just to turn on your computer click facebook or click google that's easy but to, to but to see how this whole process is working there has to be there has to be an explanation why do they have billions of dollars of profits? Where is it coming from? It's got to be coming from somewhere. They're not really making anything. They're using everybody else's content that somebody else has made. Like you, you make your posts that you put on there. You make all these stupid arguments you have with people that they keep throwing you at, at you know, they, mm, Vox is good. No, Vox is bad. Oh, Vox is good. You're wrong. I know. This is the statistics. Look at this wormhole on YouTube. You know, it, 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 back, back and forth. But yay, hey, you're on here longer. We can serve you more ads and we can collect more dough. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not a healthy, w healthy way to be communicating when we're in an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also interesting to think about as well. Um, people, like I know I have, I've had family members that are like so susceptible to those Facebook ads. And like, it's like, I just get like calls from like people in my family that are like, oh yeah, I bought this thing off of it. I bought this thing online and it hasn't come in yet. Or it's like, I got it. And it's like, you know, a miniature of what I thought it was. And I'm like, was it a Facebook ad? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, don't click on those. And I just like, I've been trying to drill it into my family and I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm about. <laughs> um, I just, I'm trying to figure out like what it is that makes people so susceptible. Like, what is it about our society that we feel like we need those things like that we're being served on there? Well, everyone has a weakness and, and the, 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 the platforms are designed to find it. Mm -hmm. And once they find it, that goes into your, into your record. Hey, oh, look at Nicole. This is how we can get her to spend her money. This is we get her to give her credit card number away. This, so you guys that worked on on this one, you guys try it too. So for this kind of an ad, you know, like yeah, yeah, and that's and I it took me a while to I, I I'm guilty as well of clicking on those ads. I don't think I I don't know that I've ever bought anything, but like even clicking on them, they're like, well, she went to our website, and then you get push notifications, and you get suddenly these companies are mess sending you messages that are like hey you you went to our website and you didn't check anything out are you sure you don't want to come back and that's like it's so intrusive yeah. i mean i don't have a weakness but i do think it is a good point that most people uh, have a weakness. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i'm so glad that i met you kelly oh uh, that don't 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 compliment me. I'll I'll blush on camera. That's bad. <laughs> uh, so I do want to um, see if uh, if the if the music will work. Do you want do you want to give it a go? I, I don't want to run out of time for you to play us a song. Yeah. Sorry, that's you, Breezy. I wasn't asking yeah. Nicole to play us. Uh, oh, song. you want me to play a song? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think that'd be nice. Okay. Yeah. We covered you. Let's do this one together. Like, like uh, you guys tell me what it should be about, and we'll just make it up. Oh. Well, we're going to make up a song? Sure, why not? It just like a, a bit, you know, like, like uh, uh, what should it be about? Like, and. Uh, hmm. See, now I'm almost wondering if. Um, Okay, wait. 
I mean, we could do a song before and after our game because I feel like uh, having, uh, if we wrote a song about the adventures that our pet store animals go through after we play the game. Okay, that would be good. Sure. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we do have a suggestion from the audience here. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Spite Sprite here says the song should be about battle frogs. So, uh, I think that's as good a suggestion as any. Well, battle frogs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, I'm just reading what's on the cards. It says battle okay, frogs. What are battle frogs? What's that? What are battle frogs? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. What are battle frogs? Yeah. And we'll just wait for that answer. <laughs> I think battle frogs are whatever you want them to be. Are there are there any other details you would want for a song? Like it's about battle frogs, but like maybe do we want to ask what their motivation is or where they are? Okay. If yeah, it doesn't refine it for us, but it's good to know that there's no wrong answer. Okay, should I take it away? Battle frogs. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. the day the battle frogs came out of the swamp. They came to fight, hate and blight. Came out of the mud. Guys, I need some more help. What did they do? Oh, God. okay. Uh, sorry, I was uh, I was attending to some uh, some business. Um, okay. I think the um, if we think of kind of the the hero's journey here, like I think that the battle frogs have to kind of uh, what's, what do they do first? Cross a threshold, like, or what sort of uh, specific adversity comes to the battle frogs? Mm. Well, if they're fighting hate and blight, what what kind of hate and blight are they fighting? Is it is it is this like is is it too real to say that they're fighting racism and COVID? Uh, they're hating. Oh, I was going to say that they're hating. Uh, they to fight hating racism hating. with love. They said, "Come on, love and respect everyone." They came to fight the COVID. They said. Please be careful. Be safe. Love and respect. All right. I don't know if the suggestions on the screen are helping you, but I wasn't lucky. Now I got, I got carried away. I was thinking about all these frogs coming out of the swamp. With love. Well, I mean, it sounds like we're all on the same page with that. Mm -hmm. Battle frogs, eh? Yeah. yeah. I appreciate you going for that. I was, uh, I was trying to think of words that would rhyme, and I was like, oh, I, yeah, I. I, I know we should have gone into like the frog was on the log. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the in the suggestion here. We had the emerged from the bog. That was oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank that you, person, Spike. Drake. That person should get a cut of the royalties. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, these are all things we can definitely work out once we get into the studio later. Yeah. So yeah, we I guess we talked about your um, 
advocacy in your mayoral candidacy. And yeah, so it's nice to get a little bit of the folk music side of you as well. Mm -hmm. Um, did you, so you were, you mentioned, um, when we were talking backstage a little bit about how, um, you think that as a folk singer, you have a responsibility to, um, call out some of the things that are going on in society and stuff. Was that, um, yeah. Do you think that that's part of that is, um, what spurred you into politics or is it the other way around? Do you think? Uh, it's kind of a bit of both. Like, can you imagine, like, I grew up like, uh, you're Alberta people, right? Well, like, I mean, the close technically from Saskatchewan, but we try not well, to remind us. That. <laughs> Actually, Saskatchewan is the is the home of the real socialists in, in Canada. But anyway, um, my dad uh, was Peter Lougheed's finance chairman. He was the guy that phoned up all the CEOs of the oil companies and said, "Oh, this is Arthur Gregg here. How are you doing? Yeah, well, you know, there's an election coming up. You're going to." Be voting for Peter, of course, aren't you going to be supporting him too? You know, so you, you know, he should send the check to the party office, blah blah. You know, that's what he did. He raised all the dough to buy all the signs and and uh, brochures and uh, like that. So that I grew up around that, and my mom was the uh, president of the Progressive Conservative Women's Association of Alberta. So I grew up seeing all that stuff. So that kind of got me. A, a basic kind of clue into what was going on with politics, but then my my passion was to play uh, play uh, electric guitar, and so uh, I was doing that. I was growing up and learning how to play the guitar at the same time the Vietnam War was on, and my musical heroes uh, were like in the peace movement, mm -hmm. and I could see how, or at least it appeared to me, that th that pop music really did help change minds of people and end that war in Vietnam. And I thought to myself, wow, this is what I want to do with my music. I want to, I want to use my music for uh, illuminating some, like, some important issues in our world. And like, so I always re respected like uh, those musicians that, that, that and, and artists that tried to, uh, to do that and talk about, uh, uh, you know, what's going on in our world and about peace and love. It's like, I'm a hippie, peace and love, right? Okay, still believe in it, sorry. You know, like... Don't apologize. I think those are wonderful things to advocate for and be actively um, trying to promote. I think that's great. Hmm. I mean, I'm a little conflicted because I'm, I'm way into peace, but like hate love. I, I find I can never, you know, uh, pick a side of the fence there. <laughs> you know, people, people always, uh, there's always people that disagree with me on part of my platform. Mm. I'm joking. It was a dumb bit. I'm sorry. No, that's good. It's tough. <laughs> I jumped in too late with the dumb bits. We were being but, so sincere. No, that's not so dumb, Kelly. Like, like hate is a, is a, is a real emotion. And it's like, it, it overcomes us sometimes. Like, I am sorry. Like, I, I'm kind of ashamed, but. I was having hateful thoughts when, when, when all those guys were honking their air horns. I've only lived like six blocks from the ledge. And, uh, you know, like I had bad thoughts and glad I didn't act on them. But uh, it, like after eight hours of honk, 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 you can you can hear it right in your house. Like, come on, like, it's especially like I'm a musician, you know, like it sounded, but it is, they're shaking your ears. Like it's. Mm. Yeah, speaking of intrusive. It's, it's hard to, yeah, hard to, hard not to let the hate or the anger take over when you're, yeah, you, there's no escape from the thing that's causing you stress. Yeah, I, I guess it's in, in a way like, like those are n normal human emotions and it's good if you, like, like if, uh, if you, uh, you get energy from being upset and angry, you get energy from that. But it, the thing is to use it for something positive and not keep dwelling on it till it becomes hate. Like mm -hmm. just you know, it, like it is there for a reason. Something's wrong, and then take that energy that you got from it and hopefully turn it into some kind of solution. That's the way I look. Yeah, be a conduit for that feeling and turn it into something productive. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really cool. 
Um, well, I think it's a great point. And if it yields a great point, is it truly a bad bit? That's my question. <laughs> well, that's a that's a question for our viewers to answer. Um, but maybe we, we should, uh, speaking of doing productive things, we should pivot to the game. Yeah, when you said speaking of intrusive earlier, I thought that was going to be your pivot for introducing our GM here. Oh, speaking of intrusive. Speaking of intrusive, there's a thing. Oh, uh, Rizzi, you can also make up lyrics to this song as it plays if you want. 